This project consists of a two-part video. In part two, I upgrade the breaker box by adding more functionality. If you have not yet watched part one of this video, I encourage you to do so as part two builds on part one. And like most projects that I make, there is a web page that details all the things that you need to know about the project. And I encourage you to go there at www.rv-project.com. I'm going to replace the front panel and add a few features that I originally intended. The prototype that you've seen in this video I built for just under $100 and the full-fledged unit is going to be anywhere from $150 to $180 depending on how far you go and if you get a front panel or you make your own front panel and so on. I just received the new front panel from a company called Front Panel Express and then I made two stiffeners. This is for the trailer connector and this is for the trailer cable. Now, now I have the bag of parts that I showed you in the first part of the video here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to put these uh, rack handles on here so that when I flip the top over, I'm not scratching the surface of anything. These screws are kind of close to the edge here. So we may have to cut a little notch out in the box. Well, next I'm going to put the test points in and that's these that I had talked about earlier. I'm going to get my little drawing out so that I know what color goes with what. And look at that, that just fits in perfectly. Okay, now black is going to be battery. Next we have the multi-position rotary switch. Now on this one, you have to know one thing about this. If you decide to buy a different switch than what I specify, you may have to change the front panel. As this switch goes here, and there's a little notch in here, that notch goes on to the switch from the back side. You can see it protruding here. It keeps this switch from turning as you turn the knob. If you get a different switch, sometimes this little orienting pin will be in a different location. Sometimes they won't have one. Now that we've got the uh, rotary switch in, we can put the knob on it. And as I said before with the meters, we don't want to over tighten these. And the last part is to put the LEDs in. And if you remember from the first part of the video, I bought four red and two green. And I figured I'd use the green for the battery and the auxiliary. And they snap in pretty good takes a little bit of force but they work they go in okay so now the front panel is completed okay and it does look okay however as I suspected the uh, screws on the back side of these aren't letting it set all the way down so we're indeed going to have to trim those a little bit and I'm also going to pull these out and put these backing plates in. And now we've got the chassis redone with the stiffeners here and stiffener here. And also if you remember in the prototype I had the 30 amp shunt on the case cover on the front panel. Well now I've relocated it to the case. And I also worked on the front panel on the back side. And it's kind of tough to do a step-by-step -step on a video while I'm using the soldering iron and all that stuff so you know just follow just follow the schematic every LED uh, goes down to its corresponding test point on the positive side then on the LED negative side they all come up to the negative side of the voltmeter then 
Each one of these test points also goes up to the rotary switch and the positive side of the voltmeter also goes to the switch so that when it sees a voltage on any of these test pins, you can see that voltage on the voltmeter. The negative side of the voltmeter goes to the ground test pin and then this will go to the ground in the bottom of the chassis. The blue wire goes from the test pin to the negative side of the ammeter and the negative and positive side of the ammeter are two separate lines and they go to the shunt. The source for each one of these is on one of these wires and now we've actually rewired everything in here. Uh, we got the shunt in. I marked the plus and minus side of the shunt. Also plus and minus side on the board. And then finally the front panel. I put fork terminals on so you can install this a whole lot easier than having to take the screw back off all the way again. Now where I'm going to put these is hard to tell, but I've turned these upside down and the reason I do that, when you take a terminal like this and you try to put another terminal on top of it, so you do have to bend it like that to get it on. However, by turning the terminal upside down so it's connected to the terminal board like that, then you can bring the fork terminal in just simply like that. And now again we just follow the color code. So now what we really need to do is just kind of tug on these wires a little bit, make sure they're in secure, and then check the color code black to black, white to white, blue to the shunt around, and then back to blue again, then yellow to yellow, brown to brown, red red, green green. So now we just button her up and we should be done. Covers on. Actually it looks pretty nice, don't it? But before I try it in the real world, I want to test it. So I'm going to take and put a voltmeter on these leads and put a power supply on these leads. Make sure everything is correct. 